This satellite image shows the Wadi Az Sarhan Basin in Saudi Arabia in 1987. A dry, barren desert can be seen stretching miles across, very similar to our imagination of a Middle Eastern country. But as time progresses, tiny circular patches of greenery can be seen appearing and overtaking the rough terrain. How did this happen to a country that had no permanent lakes and receives less than 4 inches of rainfall annually? When we imagine Saudi Arabia, a picture of never-ending deserts, jagged mountains, and scorching heat comes to mind. But this is slowly changing with time. In the last 60 years, Saudi Arabia has converted 24,000 square kilometers of desert into fertile land. This is bigger than the size of Slovenia and double the size of Qatar. Not only that, Saudi Arabia was one of the leading exporters of wheat in 1984. The areas of Tabuk, Hale, and Qasim gave the highest yields with a figure reaching up to 3.6 tons per acre. Even though the country imports 75-85% to 85 of its food from abroad, it still manages to export wheat, fruits, vegetables, pulses, dairy products, and much more. Land under cultivation was less than 400,000 acres in 1976, reaching millions of acres by the 21st century. This is surprising for a desert country where the staple form of diet for centuries was dates. Now dates are grown only for humanitarian aid and gifted to allies. What was Saudi's secret to this blowing success? What strategies have they used for transforming their land? And is there something for other countries to learn? Watch this video till the end to find out. If you're new to this channel, then welcome to Visionary Builds. We cover everything from floating cities to insane skyscrapers. We're committed to releasing two amazing videos weekly, so consider subscribing to our channel. Historically, agriculture in the Arabian Peninsula was limited mostly to date farming and small-scale vegetable production in widely scattered oases, except in a small coastal strip in the southwest. Small plots produced enough food for the local communities, and any extra was sold to passing caravans. Before oil was discovered, Saudi Arabia was a poor nation with little or no economic structure. The social life was also simple, with the majority engaged in herding and agriculture. In 1938, an American-owned oil well was drilled into what would soon be identified as the largest source of petroleum in the world. This discovery changed the physical, human, and political geography of Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, and the world. The Saudi economy has made tremendous strides since commercial oil production started. A series of national development plans was formulated, and the government has devoted considerable attention to the improvement of education, the Bijuan lifestyle, and many other aspects of society. With this oil money, Saudi Arabia was able to transform its agricultural landscape. Serious agricultural development began in the 70s. The government launched an extensive program to promote modern farming technology, establish rural roads, irrigation networks, and storage and export facilities, and encourage agricultural research and training institutions. This resulted in a phenomenal yield of basic foodstuffs. But how did this agricultural transformation happen? After all, the most important component of agriculture is water, and being an arid, dry country, Saudi Arabia has no reliable freshwater source. The majority of Saudi Arabia's fresh water was the aquifers. Just like fossil fuels, aquifers are trapped underground water formed thousands of years ago when the climate of Saudi Arabia was much wetter. The Saudi desert was sitting on top of some 500 billion cubic meters of fossil water, sufficient to fill Lake Erie in the U.S. Starting in the 1970s, the government undertook an important effort to map such aquifers and drilled wells for urban and agricultural use. In recent years, an estimated 21 billion cubic meters have been taken out every year to support modern intensive farming. But unlike its never-ending oil deposit, the water was limited. It's estimated that four-fifths of the Saudi's fossil water is now gone. That means one of the planet's greatest and oldest freshwater resources in one of its hottest and most parched places has been all but emptied in a little more than a generation. Faced with no choice, Saudi Arabia had to look elsewhere. That's why it's buying fertile land in the southwest U.S. for growing alfalfa hay and then shipping it back to the Middle East. This trend is not liked by local Californians concerned about depleting their region's water resources. But that's partly because the area of the Arizona desert where the Saudis bought land is a region with little or no regulation on groundwater use. In contrast, 85% of states have strict groundwater rules. But beyond buying land overseas, which either way can't support all the production, Saudi Arabia is trying various strategies to economize its water. 
a network of dams has been built to trap and utilize precious seasonal floods. More than 200 dams collect an estimated 16 billion cubic feet of runoff annually in their reservoirs. One of the largest of these dams are located in Wadi Jazan, Wadi Fatima, Wadi Bisha, and Najran. This water is used primarily for agriculture and it is distributed through thousands of miles in irrigation canals and ditches to vast tracts of fertile land that were previously fallow. The use of technology is rapidly dominating the agricultural spheres globally. Similarly, Arabs are using it to make their farming practices more efficient and consume less water. New strategies include the use of satellites to obtain pictures of farmland. The resulting thermal images help to understand better the relationship between crop growth and overall water use. Farmers compare water requirements for different crops and estimate which crop has the highest yield given a certain amount of water. Another source of water is the sea, but as expected, seawater is salty and needs to be treated before putting it to use. The kingdom utilizes 27 desalinization stations that produce more than 3 million cubic meters a day of potable water. These plants provide more than 70% of the waters used in cities, as well as a sizable portion of the needs of industry. They are also a major source of electric power generation. In fact, Saudi Arabia is the world's largest producer of desalinated water. Moreover, recycling water has also gained traction in similar drought-prone regions. Saudi Arabia aims to recycle as much as 40% of the water used for domestic purposes in urban areas. To this end, recycling plants have been built in Riyadh, Jeddah, and other major urban industrial centers. Recycled water is used for irrigation of farm fields and urban parks. All of these methods combined give the country sufficient water for the time being. However, a major shift in farming came through the improved irrigation systems. If you look at the northern regions of Saudi Arabia through a Google map, you'll see green circles everywhere. These circles represent fertile land irrigated by a technique called the center pivot system. The center pivot system uses a range of sprinklers around an access point. This method was invented in 1940 by the farmer Frank Zybach, who lived in Strasbourg, Colorado. It was quickly recognized as an effective method to improve water distribution to fields. They are beneficial due to their ability to efficiently use water and optimize a farm's yield. The systems are highly effective on large landfields. The sprinklers rotate circularly like a compass resulting in circular crop fields. In addition to uniformly spraying water, they can also be used to spray pesticides and fertilizers. This method of irrigation can use heavy water pumps that are capable of pumping water to an 8 km radius. The circumference of these circular fields is around 3.5 km. A groundbreaking invention was revealed by Norwegian scientists that converts desert sand into fertile soil. Known as liquid nanoclay LNC, it gives the soil a clay coating by mixing nanoparticles of clay with water and binding them with sand particles. Since sand particles are loose, they cannot trap water efficiently, but this treatment allows them to do so. Without using any chemicals, LNC saved water consumption by over 50% in its trial run in the Dubai farms. Saudi Arabia is also planning to enhance its soil capacity using nanoclay. It's an expensive technology, but it provides a good option for Saudi Arabia as well as other regions that are water scarce and relatively reliant on food imports. There are also other farming techniques that don't require soil and hence conserve water. Take vertical farming, for example. Due to a lack of fertile soil, Saudi Arabians are growing indoor crops within a controlled environment. Vertical farming requires 90% less water than conventional farming at a time when 26 billion cubic meters of water is consumed by the Saudi agricultural sector. The Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture has allocated $26.5 million for developing vertical farming technologies. Although there are only a few vertical farms in the country, one example is the Bather Smart Farm, launched in 2022. With a cultivation area spanning over 2,000 square meters, the farm has an estimated production capacity of 16 tons per month. The smart farm produces lettuce and microgreens, which will be available for sale within the country. But beyond agriculture and farming, Saudi Arabia is adamant about increasing its green space. The government launched the Saudi Green Initiative, which aims to rehabilitate 40 million hectares of land and restore the natural greenery, with the target of planting 10 billion trees. In a region with low annual precipitation and falling groundwater levels, the SDI project will stop and reverse desertification and soil degradation while preserving the kingdom's biodiversity and protecting the region's decreasing water reserves. 
other mega-scale projects like King Salman Park, which will be the largest urban park in the world once completed, are also leading the battle against urbanization and climate change. This is part of a much larger project, Riad Green, as the name indicates. Riad will undergo planned landscaping that'll increase its green coverage from 1 to 9%. With an estimated cost of $32 million, it aims to plant 7.5 million trees by 2030. It's hoped that this will make the Saudi capital one of the top 100 most livable cities in the world by improving access to green space, air quality, and the well-being of the city's residents. The creation of new cities like Neom has an emphasis on planting trees and integrating clean energy solutions into their folder. We've covered two of Neom's projects, the Lion and the Epicon on this channel, so if you're interested, We've linked it in the i button in the description. If you liked today's video, drop a like and hit the bell icon to remain updated on our future releases. What other techniques should Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern nations adopt to reduce their food dependency? Mention your thoughts below. Subscribe to Visionary Builds for two amazing videos each week.